What free software is so good you can't believe it's available for free? Ops. Open broadcasting software. Free. Open source. Really good recording software for your computer. I remember trying to use Fraps when I was younger and it was just terrible. But now that I have OBS recording and even freaking liver streaming have never been easier. Surprised search everything is not here. Instant file search. Change the way I used computers. Where was this my entire life? So much lost time waiting for Windows to look for a damn file. While you're at it check out Clover. It adds tabs to your file explorer. Tabber also adds tabs to explorer. And a ton of other functionality. Mouse over previews being my favorite. And the tabs look native too. Two come to mind. PFSense and FreeNAS. Both are heavily used at my house. PFSense is a free open source firewall and router that is feature complete to the level of competing with almost all SMB. Small and medium business. Commercial firewalls. It is also extremely reliable. FreeNAS is a software network attached storage operating system. It quickly transforms any spare old computer with a few drives and a network interface to a centralized file server with support for almost everything under the sun. From Apple Time Machine backups to enterprise ISC setups that allow diskless booting of machines on the local network. Here's hoping I remember FreeNAS is a thing when I decide to make one. As a digital painter critter is probably the best art software you're going to get for free. As long as you add the brush packs. Some of the stuff I've managed to whip up the amount of adapting you can do to the main window is insane. I'm so glad someone else said this. Critter is so nice. I can keep all my cool photoshop brushes and still make pretty pictures. D I don't really miss using photoshop since discovering it. I did initially have issues figuring out how to make stop rotating but then it was like oh. It's literally right there. Oh. Zotero. For those of you who do academic writing. This reference manager is 100x better and 1000x freer than EndNote. I've heard great stuff about Zotero. I'm on Mendeley, because that's what I started on. Have a lot of references in it, and I have no complaints. IDK why people pay for EndNote. Mendeley is all good. Owned by Elsevier though, so likely to be harnessed for evil at some stage. Studio is a wonderful Lego modeling program. It's great for recapturing that feeling of building with bricks. And you don't have to worry about running out of a certain color or stepping on a 1x1 piece. Apparently it also has an option to work on a project with your friends. But I haven't tried it out. That's interesting. I've never heard of it. I've always used LDD. Blender. For as much as the software gets. It is a workhorse for those of us willing to put in the time to learn it. It does tons of stuff from modeling. To animation. To video compositing. It regularly gets updates and the tech behind it is only getting better. Could it be better? Sure. Absolutely. But for something that is free it's amazing. It also does liquid, soft body, and smoke fire physics. I've been using it for the past year to learn 3D modeling. There are a lot of good tutorials online that you can look up as well. Blender honestly does more stuff than I can probably list. The fact that they keep adding new things and going back to fix update old ones is incredible. I'll be honest, the only reason I know Blender exists is because some people make real high quality porn with it. I don't know if this is relevant but I need to get this off my chest. What? No they don't. No one would do that. Like, who? Who would do that? Like specifically, ugh those disgusting Blender porno sites. I mean there is so many of them though. Which one? Which one do they post to? Handbrake. Free. Very powerful video converter. The real magic ingredient in Handbrake is Fmpeg, which also powers good as like VLC, YouTube, Kodi, Chrome ETC. Fmpeg's Remux feature is probably my favorite thing ever. Instead of converting a 14GB file for a few hours, I Remux in about 2 minutes with zero loss. It's beautiful. Good for DVD ripping too. Draw.io web based online diagram software. This is by far the best option for doing flowcharts. I've used it on many projects. Desmos.com. It's an online graphing calculator and it's so much better than Jetty i84 I had to spend $120 on. It graphs all kinds of equations. For example, you don't have to isolate Y. You can graph complete inverses. And constant plaza holders exist too. Don't you mean Desmos.com? Have a look at these free online calculators as well. 
FX solve the great for solving math and engineering problems quickly. Lots of ready-made formulas to calculate, edit and plot. Smith nice step-by-step -step solutions. Math-centric. Math way cool math solver and chemistry solver. Plotting similar to Desmos. 100% agree. Desmos has saved my but when I needed nice graphs fast. If you like free, nice math sites Symbolab is a really lovely equation solver, among other things. A nice substitute for Mathematica if all you want to do is solve something. VLC has played every video file in every format I've given it with no problems. Also, all the video game emulators. It's amazing how you can have a fully working console on your computer with almost any game from that console for free. VLC saved a film of ours. No other software could read the corrupted Final Cut proxy files which was all that was left after a corrupt drive. But VLC was able to read most of it and export it to a full file I could use again. Pretty incredible. VLC is one of the only video player out there that try to read a video even if it detects a corruption or an error in the file. They have some quirks with some pro formats but it's a good software. My only issue with VLC is how crappy its HEVCD coding is. MPCHC is about 2x faster for HEVC. Are it's a statistics software. Has a ton of add-ons that you can download for free and it's you have to learn it but it will do anything once you do. I'm reading this thread as I procrastinate doing my data mining assignment on our studio. I have come full circle. I hated using R because it's always just one class that makes you do a few random assignments with it. So you never truly learn it but you also can't escape it. Open SCAD create 3D models with a scripting language. If you have a 3D printer and you want to print some exotic shapes or if you're creating parts that might need a parameter tweak here and there each run it's fantastic. My favorite for 3D modeling stuff for my printer. Mostly because I'm a programmer so I feel right at home defining shapes in open SCAD. It's better than CSS. LaTeX. I just started learning it a few weeks ago, and I've already switched over to it for doing all my assignments. The documents are just so much more beautiful and well formatted than GDocs or Word, and it handles equations and math much better than either, which is good for me since I'm in engineering so lots of math. I'd highly encourage anyone who's studying math science engineering to learn and start using LaTeX. Interesting story of how Tex came about. Knuth, one of the fathers of computer science, was writing his book and found the software available at the time to be bad. So he wrote Tex so that he could write his book on it. Reminds me of this, as ever, appropriate XKCD. For PPL who find LaTeX a bit intimidating there is Lix which is a document processor built on LaTeX but with a GUI. Not a fan of Lix, but love Tex Studio. Draft site. Full CAD software available for free. Functionality and commands work almost exactly like AutoCAD. Put that alongside Fusion 360. Audacity. Audio. Used to love Earth and View. Paintnet is life now. Earth and View is my fave for quick. OBS Studio. Definitely OBS. Even if you don't stream it's still a great recording app. I remember before it was a thing you had to faff about with things like XSplit and DXTory if you wanted to stream anything. Huge pain. OBS comes along and offers everything you need in one simple, easy to use and relatively lightweight interface. There was also the ungodly huge filler sizes with fraps, and the encoding wasn't even good with it. You'd think for how large fraps recordings were, the encoding would be half decent. Space Engine is free, for now. I'd say a program that simulates the known universe, and beyond, for free on your computer is a good deal. I don't know if you knew this but there's actually a very early prototype of a Kerbal Space Program style game hidden in Space Engine. You can drop in some shuttles and a massive interplanetary cruiser and fly them around and dock them together. In fact I recommend flying through interstellar space with a warp freighter while listening to the FTL soundtrack. It's fun. FTL soundtrack? Giant alien spiders are no joke. Key pass. I have been using that as my password manager since 2008. It's updated regularly. Has two versions. One net and the other not is entirely portable on Windows at least and works on a few OSs besides Windows. As plugins if you need any functionality the base version doesn't have. It's changed the way I store passwords, addresses, errors for everything. There's a learning curve but I have fallen in love with never having to remember a password. Calibre. 
helps me manage my ebooks easily. I just found out 11 months after getting a Kindle you can email the files to your Kindle. Calibre Plus email is effing awesome. It can also remove pesky DRM from ebooks. Great for me and my so to share books with each other. Hey hey, it just supports the plugin. I love Calibre, and all the great plugins. Recuva, it restore deleted files as long as the memory hasn't been wrote over. Some days ago, I was going through clips I recorded on my camera, and by accident erased the clip I needed. Scanned the SD card on Recuva, bam, got it back from video hell. Thanks Recuva for forgiving my carelessness. Work on HDD2. Not technically a software, but, it has millions of free downloads for music movies books software, etc. One very popular example is that it is home to a very large catalogue of Grateful Dead recordings. It also has the internet arcade where you can play a lot of classic games along with the console living room which is similar. They have access to tons of old PC games too and you can even play the original Oregon Trail online. It also has the Wayback Machine which has archived more than 310 billion web pages saved over time so you can go back and see how websites were years ago. For example, here's Reddit on the 25th of July, 2005 a month after it was created. The fact that you have access to all these amazing resources for free is pretty awesome. The Internet Archive also offers a tool which shows you what the Reddit front page looked like on the day you created your account. Back when Redditors were editors, Ask Reddit posts were excuses for anecdotes, and our atheism was a default subreddit. Back when I was starting to use Reddit, in July 2013, I moved to a new city and didn't have internet at my place for a week. I also didn't have a phone. I would visit a Tim Hortons with free Wi-Fi once a day with my clunky laptop do my internet stuff and then when it came time to leave I would search a credit by top of all time and open like 12 different threads. So when I was at home and needed a little fix of internet I'd have 12 pages waiting for me on Firefox to just binge on. I bring it up because I recognized your username as someone who was quite well known around these parts back then and seeing you brings me back. Cheers, lol apparently 4 years ago some of the top comments on Reddit were still quoting it's always sunny, not much has changed. I link the Oregon Trail game and teach my 4th graders how to play every year. Please to report that they are just as excited to play that game as we always were. Check out Audio Router. Great little piece of freeware that lets me route sounds through different sets of speakers. So I can watch a stream on my TV and play a game on my main monitor. Paintnet. Like Adobe Photoshop bend Ms. Paint over a table and made a love child. I used to be heavy into graphic design using Photoshop but that junk got too expensive to keep up with. Tried GIMP for years but it alley eyes felt too clumsy. Paintnet hits the sweet spot. I feel like Paintnet is a good launch pad into PS. It has a simple UI and is easy to work with. However it has its limits. Even with plugins. Linux. Apache. Posters. GCC. This thread shows it's a consumer's world. JIT, I've been using it for software development for years and I still get blown away with how much value it adds to the whole process. The entire world runs on Linux and JIT. The real MVPs. Posters. The only database I'll ever use. I love it. Notepad Plus changed the way I text. Oh you what this formatted as C code? WA BAM. You're welcome. Notepad Plus. 2016. Atom. Sublime Text or Visual Studio Code, my fav, is what the cool kids use nowadays. Plex for movies, freaking ridiculous that it is free, automatically downloads all the metadata for a movie, like thumbnail, hell even has rotten tomato scores on it, has voice appy so you can actually search by voice, remembers and marks episodes or movies as watched, brings up new movies that you recently added to your library to the forefront. Wikipedia. It's actually free in all senses of the word. If you want to nitpick that it's a website and not a software, well it's a software too. You can download the Wikimedia software, set it up with no hassle, download all of Wikipedia and set it up in your instance of Wikimedia. So now you have your very own Wikipedia, with blackjack and hookers if you want. God damn, it's only 242 gigabytes for the entire English Wikipedia. With media, that's crazy how you could put it on a 1TB hard drive and still have literally sh tons of space left. X you think if there was some apocalypse, we could spend an hour to back up a compendium of human knowledge in a wallet size box. 
twice, and then duplicate it in a minute if someone wanted a copy. I'm gonna download it all just because I have the space for it. Wait, can I download it somewhere? Inkscape. Who needs Adobe Illustrator? Inkscape is powerful and its interface is wonderfully intuitive. Fusion 360. Full parametric 3D CAD with toolpath controls for CNC and a slicer for 3D printing or prototyping and load stress calculation I could go on. VLC needs more love than WinRA. Shout out to 7zip for being awesome and completely free. Seconded, it's so much better than WinRA in any way. Doesn't override default zip opening behavior. Doesn't bug you to pay, it's completely free. Faster to load, at least for me. The real hero behind VLC is, 7zip needs more love than WinRA. LMMS is a surprisingly versatile music studio, not entirely comparable to FL, but it gets pretty close. Doom shareware on 3.5 floppy disk. The Windows snipping tool literally changed my life and it was there the whole time. Agreed. We love it at work, so we don't have to print screen everything. Print screen is really inconvenient when you have two monitors. You should look at Sherox. Even better. Holy crap you just blew my mind. Ready to have your mind blown some more? Try shortcut window key shift S. DaVinci Resolve. For those who are curious, it's high-end video color correcting. Now they bundle it with video and audio editing packages. There's a free version. It's the color software. And the free version does up to UHD. If you want true 4K you gotta pay. Arduino. The platform can help you DIY basically anything. The software is free and open source. Google Maps on a cell phone. Navigation systems used to cost hundreds of dollars not too long ago. But Google is not free. You are the product. Yes, that is entirely true. However, Google Maps can be used without signing into the app. Will this prevent Google from collecting location data? A necessity for any map app. And linking it to you personally? Probably not. But you can reduce targeted advertising to some extent. You can also turn off recording of your location information. Or delete your recorded location history. In iOS, you can only permit the app to use your location information when in use. Which is pivotal for providing any map service. Except offline maps. But your cell phone costs hundreds of dollars also. So what is the difference? Unlike the navigation systems that were, and are still as pointed out by many available and cost hundreds of dollars. Cell phones are multi-purpose devices. I imagine that most of us use cell phones primarily for other purposes than as navigation devices. Was is better. I suppose that is personal preference. Was. Also a subsidiary of Alphabet the parent company of Google. Is undoubtedly useful and have more info. But I haven't gotten to like its UI. I remember buying a TomTom -tom to drive around Western Europe back in 2006. The unit itself cost a little under $1000 and the SD cards with country specific maps were sold separately. If the roadway had been updated since the map was published you were sold. On the flip side getting lost in Slovenia made for an interesting weekend. TomTom. -tom. That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. My 33 year old day would always be lost without Google Maps. Thank you technology gods for this wonderful app. I'm happy you found it. I know you mean free as in price. But here are some free, as in open source software I love that are also free of cost. Darktable Photo Workflow a la Lightroom. Very powerful and there are a solid number of plugins for it to boot. Gimp FOS Image. Unity. Lots of documentation and pretty much sparked indie games development to my knowledge. Allows rookies to create projects with literally no price tag. The problem with Unity is that bad products are usually made with the free version, which has the made by Unity logo, while better products use the paid version, which doesn't have the logo, hence it's somewhat bad rep. You can even see it in these comments. The whole only use Unity if you want your game to suck mean is really pervasive despite the fact that a ton of really great games, and something like 80% of mobile games, are made in Unity and just don't advertise it. Green shirt. Print screen tool very handy. Everything associated with latex, will never typeset math inward again. Malware bytes Actually works. The dots make me uncertain. Nah man. They make my writing feel more natural. And totally not. Like. Unconfident and or depressed. Just sprinkle them into your writing at random. Readers will thank you. For ruining their. 
reading cadence. Duolingo. For a free language learning app it's extremely clean, user friendly, and engaging. It makes learning a language fun and interactive, and comparing it to expensive software and other apps like Rosetta Stone and such, it's very comparable if not even better in some aspects. GIMP it's an image editor that is incredibly powerful similar to Photoshop and open source. Discord, hands down best way to comb with teammates while gaming, not just gaming, I have seen many channels that was about other things, makes this program even more valuable. I think it's just a nice way to chat in or out of groups too. 7-Zip, haven't touched WinRAR since. iPhone View, I was introduced to it when I started as a photo lab technician. It's great for batch sizing, basic edits, color, contrast etc, batch cropping and rotating etc and it reads most image file types I would come across, excluding RAWs. 10 stroke 10 would recommend and I put it on every computer I own made my job so much faster and made me seem like a ninja to customers. Shazam is a fine magic. It's the most impossible future magic thing we do with our phones.